Hello everyone. Welcome to Aptitude Jam. This is a set based on bar graphs. It becomes even more simple if you know the rules of cricket. So it says a test match is played across five days. Each day's game being played in three sessions. The number of overs bowled in sessions one, two, and three are 25, 30, and 35 respectively. The below graph shows the run rates. Run rates is run scored per over of the team batting teams during each of the sessions on the five days. So we are given that run rate is equal to runs upon number of overs. So if you know the number of, uh, if you know the uh, run rate and the number of overs, so we can say that runs is equal to run rate into overs that is played. Okay. Now we are also, we can find the number of runs scored. We are also given that team A bats until its innings ends. So the rule of the game is given to us. Team A bats, then team B will bat, then team B's, if team B's innings ends, team A begins its second innings. So then team A will have its second innings and this is followed by team B's second innings. So first A will bat and then B will bat. This is the first innings. Then A will bat in its second innings and B will bat in its second innings. The excess of runs is called lead while the deficit is called trail. So suppose if A scores 280 runs and B scores 325 runs. Okay, so B has 45 runs extra. So we will say that B leads by lead for B. Or you can also say that it is trail for A. So A trails by 45 runs. or B leads by 45 runs. So basically it is like a profit and loss thing. So profit for one person and loss for another. Then we are given that the target of team B in the second innings is calculated on the basis of lead or trail in the first innings. So let us take this example. Let us say A scored 280 and B scored 325. Now A scored suppose 250 runs. Okay. Now in this first innings, B had a lead of 45 runs. So B's target will be 250 minus 45. That will mean that 205 is the effective score. So that is the effective score because they were already behind by 45 runs. So B needs 206 runs to win in the second innings. So that's how the target is set. If one knows the rules of cricket, then this is a very simple thing. But if it does not, do you do not know the rules, this is how it needs to be calculated. It is fairly simple. You just need to subtract the runs and uh, like if the team is leading, then in that case, you need to subtract the runs and if team was trailing, you will add the runs. Suppose instead of 325, we say that team B scored uh, 270 runs and team A scored 250 runs. So it was minus 10 runs behind A. There was a trail of 10. So we will add 10 to the score. So it will become 260 as the effective score will need 261 to win. Okay, so now let us read further data and solve the questions. So it says that team A played its first innings till first session of day two and team B played its first innings till second session of day three. Till the end of day four, team B had scored 40 runs in their second innings. And based on this data and the graph, we need to answer the questions. Okay, so the first thing first is we will need to calculate the scores in each of the sessions. So session one had 25 overs, session two has 30 and session three has 35 overs. So on each of the days, we will calculate the runs. So day one, session one, day one, session two, day one, session three, okay, then day two, session one, day two, session three, uh, session, uh, session one, session two and day two, session three. Then day three, session one, day three, session two, day three, session three. Similarly, day four, session one, day four, session two, and day four, session three. Okay. Then we will write it here day five, session one, day five, session two, and day five, session three. Okay, so we will need a good amount of calculation here. So it is a calculation heavy set. So first day it is 
and then we have 3.6 and this is 3.2 so 2.6 into 25 65 and 36 into 308 and then we will have the final is 3.2 into 35 so 32 into 3.5 or 16 into 7 which is 112 runs okay then day 2 we will calculate like this same way this is 3.4 so 34 into 25 that will make it 85 and this is 2.9 29 into 3 is 87 and finally it is 2.8 okay, so 2.8 into 3.5 28 into 3.5 we can say that it is uh, 14 into 7 or 98 runs on day 3 the scores are 3.6 so that will be 90 and then we will have this is just 2.3 so 23 into 3 is 69 and finally we have 3.2 so 3.2 we calculated previously also 112 and day 4 it is 2.8 2.9 and 3.6 so 28 and 25 that is 70 this will be 87 and 3.6 uh, would mean that uh, 18 into 7 126 runs okay then finally on day 5 we have it as 2.6 that would mean 65 then it is 3.5 which means 35 into 305 and finally this last session is 3.5 Okay, which is 112. So that was calculated several times. Okay, so this is the result of the course which was coded in each of the sessions. Now we will use the calculations to answer the question. The first question is simple. It says in how many sessions during the game the teams scored more than 80 but less than 100 runs. So between 80 and 100 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and five such sessions then the next question is on which day were the maximum runs scored if you try to observe the graph uh, it looks like day one has decent number of runs only in the first session this graph is low but first session has low weightage but day two we can say that the runs would be lesser because in day session two and three the run rate is low Day 3 also uh, the session the run rate in the second session is quite low it is high in the first session day 4 and 5 have high run rates in the uh, day 4 has especially very high run rate in the third session and uh, but low in the other two day 5 has good run rate in the last two sessions so last two sessions impact more but it it is not conclusive which of these is the highest right because uh, like no clear cut indication so we eventually have to do the calculations now the options given to us are 1 2 3 and 4 uh, like if you see day 2 and day 3 they have one session with very low run rate like day 3 has session 2 with very low run rate and day 2 also has uh, sessions 2 and 3 with low run rates so possibly that they may not be the right ones but however we will calculate all the values this is just to explain that how you should like evaluate a graph so by observation i can say that day two and three may not be the highest ones anyway we'll calculate it so if you add this is 220 plus 65 285 uh, this value is 97 plus 98 plus 87 185 plus 85 270 which is definitely not the highest this is 181 plus 90 271 again we said that day two and day three are on the lower side uh, day 4 if you calculate this is uh, 80 plus uh, 70 plus 126 uh, is 196 283 very close to day 1 okay so close touch and day 1 stands out to the highest So definitely day 5 cannot be the highest but it should be a significant number 170 plus 112 282 right so which we could figure out because we had higher run rates in these two sessions so day 1 has the maximum run scored now comes the actual part about the scoring of the teams it says how much lead did team a take in its first innings so we will calculate the runs for team a and team b in the innings right so first innings 
we have team A playing till the end of first session of day two. So 285 here plus 85 more that is 370 runs. Then team B played its first innings till second session of day three. This is 98 plus 87, 185. 185 plus 159 that will be 340 344 now this is a lead of 26 runs for team a and the final question is what was the target for team b in the second innings so now team b it is given that uh, team b till the end of day 4 team b had scored 40 runs now these are all scored by a these are all scored by A. These are all scored by A. Now in 126, B has scored 40 runs. So A must have scored 86 runs in this innings. Now we will find its total score. So we have uh, in second innings, it had 70. Uh, first of all, 112. Then 70. Then 87. And then 86 more runs. Okay. So 87 plus 86 is 173. 173 and this is 182 so 355 runs a2 had 355 runs and it had a lead of 26 runs so add 26 to it effectively they had 381 runs so b had a target of 382 runs so this was the solution to the set and the answers to the questions